Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome in to a Thanksgiving Eve episode of the Don't Tell Mama Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Cobo. Joining me from Chicago, Illinois, my guy, Kyle Jennings. Kyle, last time I saw you, I was in Chicago at your wedding. Awesome wedding. Had a great time, first off. How how's the how's the marriage so far? Is the honeymoon phase over? Is it still rolling? <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know because we we've been dating for a long time. So Christiana. honeymoon phase, yeah, we've been dating for a long time. So I mean, we had already been through the honeymoon phase and into the you know, I don't know, empty nesters. We were we went through a bunch of phases, but I mean, it's going good though. That's awesome. Just moved, moved a couple weeks ago um, into a new spot. So, uh, right next door to Christiana's cousin. Not yet, not yet. They're still working on that, but that will be probably the next move. That's the next move. That uh, that's gonna be a nice spot right there. That's gonna be a nice yeah. spot. How's yeah. uh, how's Christiana doing? <laughs> she she's doing all right. She's a little sick right now. A little sick. And also a little sick of my shit a little bit. Both. Well, that ain't, that ain't yeah. surprising. That ain't surprising. Nah. It's not are we surprised no nah, of course can't not. be can't be well like i said it's uh it's thanksgiving eve here it's wednesday night november 22nd kyle what are you getting into uh for thanksgiving this year bro got got my annual turkey bowl next year i think we're on year eight the ocho the ocho coming up okay um, we lost for the first time two years ago so right now we're six and one should not be like that uh, but I decided that out of the, you know, the spirit of the holiday of Thanksgiving, that we needed to be more giving. So we gave them one year. I told my team we could give them one win every seven years. So that's the new thing we're gonna do. So we beat them by thirty last year after they after they won the first time. So uh, we might ease up on them a little bit, beat them by twenty eight until is, the seventh year and give them the dub again. Is this a family football game we're talking about here? Uh, friends, 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 you friends. Know, a lot of them, you know. Okay. Well, I mean, no. Okay. I'm, Jeremiah, I'm, Mike, Cody, oh, all of them. Oh, uh, I, Connor, all of them. You, so you you gave him a spanking <laughs> by thirty points last year. You're saying? Well, our team did. The only yeah. one that's on the other team. Jeremiah's on the other team, but I got Mike, Cody, Connor, all on my team. But they're trying to mix up the teams. They try to mix it up every year. But that's, you you don't work out all the time. You're not about it, huh? You want to keep your team? No, we mix it up. Okay. It's just you know. We, we 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 stand on business on my side on my it, side we, we like to stand on business i like it and tell the people where you're doing that at indian good oh actually noblesville the good old indianapolis indiana noblesville a little bit north of indianapolis you know homestead that's where home is nice nice uh kelly and i over here we're gonna go down down south tomorrow morning colorado springs her her twin brother's Live twin brother lives down there and uh, his family, so we're gonna be spending the day with them, spend the night with, spend the night with them. So looking forward, to some turkey and some football. It's gonna be gonna be a good time. Gonna be relaxing, man. Can't beat it. Can't beat it. Love Turkey Day. But just like every Turkey Day, there's gonna be football. Okay, we got a triple header tomorrow. We got a Black Friday game this year, first time ever. So we're definitely had to come give you give you a quick podcast here today. I mean, I say quick right now, but we all know it's going to be a little longer than quick. <laughs> we're going to give you our game picks and our extra juicy dogs like we do every week. But we got to start here with the Maui Invitational because we we did a whole podcast, Kyle, uh, Max and I. We did a whole podcast previewing this tournament because Kansas was in it, number one, Kansas, number two, Purdue, number four, Marquette, number seven, Tennessee, number 11, Gonzaga, UCLA, Syracuse. My goodness, it was the most loaded field ever. Most loaded field ever. Five of the top 11? My goodness. It concluded today, the three-day event, with the Purdue Boilermakers cutting down the nets. I, I It stings me to talk about it. You know, I know Max is... <laughs> His, his asshole's burning right now. He wishes he could rub it in my face, but I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna give my respect to him right now and talk about his boilers boilers because they won their first ever Maui Invitational title. Along the way today in the championship game, they took down number four Marquette by three. They took down number seven Tennessee by four, and they beat number eleven Gonzaga by ten. 
back on Monday. Zach Eady, the big dog. We all know the reigning national player of the year. Today, he had 28 points and 15 boards on 58% shooting. Yesterday against Tennessee, 23 and 10 on 70% shooting. And in that ass beating of Gonzaga, 25 and 14 on 50% shooting. In this championship game against Marquette, Purdue had double the amount of threes, 10 to 5. They were plus 13 on the boards. They led by as many as 15 points in this game before Marquette came back at the end, made it a game. Last guy I want to talk about is former Mr. Indiana, Braden Smith. He chipped in 18 points today to go along with five boards and five assists. He knocked down four out of six from deep. Kyle, give me your thoughts on these stats and the fact that the Boilers, they cut down the nets in Maui this year. I mean, hey, man, they went through the gauntlet, man. They played three ranked teams. Like you said, there was five top 11 teams. They beat three of them. They're one of the other ones, so it means they only didn't go through one. So it wasn't a cakewalk, you know, for that invitational. And, hey, Zach Eady, I heard all last year, I kept saying, I was like, you know, I think he could be a good player at the next level. Um, but everybody said, no, 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 he's just too slow. He's too clunky. And I'm like, I don't know. I think he's going to find a role. I, I, I like him. He's a little slow, but, I mean, he knows how to play the game. And, I mean, you're putting up 20, 20 plus and 14, I mean, 20 and 10 consistently. Yeah. I don't care what level you're at once you're past high school. Like, that's impressive. So, uh, I mean, like I said, they, they went through the gauntlet. Those are good wins. Those are good teams. Uh, and I think they're, they're gearing up for March Madness. I don't think they like how they went out last year. So, uh, yeah. This is this is to- totally a revenge year, like you say, for yeah. for the Boilers with losing to the 16 seed Fairly Dickinson Knights last season. <laughs> Def- definitely a revenge season. I mean, they had they had, they had the toughest road to get to the championship, going through those three ranked teams. Very impressive. Just to let everybody else know, Kansas, my Jayhawks, they were handled by Marquette in the semifinals due to 18 turnovers. Kansas scored 59 points and had 18 turnovers. You're not going to win when you do that. Marquette Marquette handled that game. But today, Kansas rebounded in the third-place game. They beat Tennessee 69-60 to behind Hunter Dickinson, 17 points and 20 boards. He is hitting the glass. Hunter Dickinson's a glass cleaner. Syracuse is playing the host school, Chaminade, now for seventh place. Right now they're playing. And then tonight... We got the fifth place game following that between Gonzaga and UCLA, a Sweet 16 rematch. That's a juicy one for fifth place. Kyle, the Boilers are the in question number one team when the new polls update on Monday morning. Are you going to argue with me about that? You got anybody no. else? No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna argue because I mean, like I said, they've proven it. They've proven it. They they're winning and they're winning against good teams. And I mean, until they get taken down. I mean, what what can you say? I mean, this might change in a couple of months from now, but I mean, as of now, I don't think you can put anybody else in number one. So, I like it, I like it. Moving along here on the Don't Tell Mama Sports Podcast, we got our guy <laughs> Kyle Jennings pinch hitting for us today. Wow. Let's get into our NFL talk, and we're gonna start right here with your team, Kyle. You're we had you on. If if people don't didn't see the episode we had him on because he's a los angeles chargers fan we had him on for the afc west breakdown kyle the los angeles chargers right now are sitting at four and six they're in 13th place in the afc out of a six out of 16 teams the season is getting short quick give me your overall thoughts on the chargers this season so i've got a note right here um, as we were doing our, our, our pre-show prep. And right here by Chargers update, I just have trash. Um, and that that is what I would say to that kind of encapsulates uh, the season. Um, I don't know if you've seen Toy Story 4, uh, but there's a part in it where Woody is carrying Sporky, the sport guy. And Sporky looks at him and he says, you're just like me. And Woody's like, what is that? Trash? And that's exactly, like, it's just, (laughs) it's, it's been a season from hell. Justin Herbert's been playing his ass off. Uh He had a two game stretch where he played poorly because he had broken his finger. Bone came, bone came out of the skin. Bone came out of the skin. (laughs) 
Left hand, oh. broken finger, little oh. hurt, plays down, team can't help him, can't do anything. Played a ridiculous game yesterday. Through the game when he touched down between our first round wide receiver, who I said couldn't catch from the beginning, right through his hands, through another laser ball right at Keenan Allen's chest at the goal line, off his chest, take a field goal. That's right. On the on the four yard line, Eckler running, fumbles the ball, lose the ball, lost possession on, in the red zone. Just, I think he had like nine incompletions that game and he had six drops. So he played the best game that you can play and he just couldn't, you can't, you can't do it. And don't get me started on Brandon Staley. Should have been gone, should have been gone after that 27 point comeback from the Jaguars last year. Yeah. Yep. Um, it's just time to reset. Really, honestly, we need a reset from the top. And I'm not just talking about the GM. The Spanos just need to sell the team. Um, I've tried my hardest to, to stay on there, but they got to sell it. You know, everything's wow. top down. It goes from the leadership. Wow. And that builds the culture for the entire organization. And they just, they can't do it. They, they can't do it. They've had, it's been in the family for years now and they haven't been able to do it. And I am not confident that's ever happening, but yeah. Wow. My update on the season is just trash. They're bad. Totally They're sell bad. the team. Totally sell the team. Start at the top. Yep. Start at yep. the top. Uh, on Justin Herbert, he's my quarterback, so I'm I'm pretty happy with him. Quarterback three on the <laughs> quarterback three on the season, yeah. looking good. Didn't yeah. even miss didn't even miss a game. Didn't even miss a game with that broken finger. Nope. Uh, Keenan Allen, he's been a freaking beast this season. Mm -hmm. Number two wide receiver on the year according to ESPN. Number two, Austin Eckler. G give me your thoughts on Eckler, uh, Kyle. You know, he he had week one, he had 117 yards and a touchdown, looked real good. Missed, mm -hmm. the missed the next three weeks, had the buy in there week five. He hasn't been over 67 rushing yards since he's been back. 67, yeah. he hasn't been over 67 rushing yards in six games since he's yeah. been back. Uh, I'm sorry to say, but I think Eckler's cooked. Um, <laughs> there's a video going around of him getting a sweep from the game in Green Bay. Dude looks like a lineman. <laughs> he's barely moving. He should have scored, man. <laughs> beefy? He's barely... Beefy. Beefy. I could have outran him. I know I could have outran that. Like, he he was moving slow. And he's just also, he's just not as shifty. And I think that's also affecting his, like, some of the other qualities he had as far as, like, um, his hands and stuff like that. I think he's really just overthinking everything now because he has lost a step. Um, I still think he's going to be valuable, but, you know, where he was getting drafted, you know, first round, super high, you know, top five pick. Yeah. He's not going to be worth that. Um, he's definitely not getting re-signed by the Chargers. Um, so I don't know where he goes next year. I do think he signs a contract, but um, I just don't think he's got the value that we were seeing previously. And uh, if you're in a dynasty format, uh, I would try to sell him now. Um, honestly, I try to sell him now, get what you can. Uh, maybe wait until he has a good game, see if you can get rid of him to a team that's um, in playoff contention and get yeah. some extra value there. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't see much, much more going for him. I, I think he'll be an okay running back middle of the pack. Might have some boom games, but other than that, that's kind of where I see him at. Yeah, Austin Eckler, uh, universally a top three to five pick going into this season, really banking on all those touchdowns. He's been leading the league in touchdowns, what, the past two seasons? Only four touchdowns on the ground and one through the air. Only five this mm -hmm. season. That's uh, you got to look at that right there. Uh, Kyle, like I said, Chargers are four and six, sitting in thirteenth, thirteenth in the AFC. Remaining schedule this Sunday night versus Baltimore at the Patriots versus the Broncos at the Raiders versus the Bills at the Broncos again and versus the Chiefs. Do the Chargers slip in the wild card? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. We're about to get murdered next week. The Ravens are about to. You'll see a little bit later when we keep when we get to our our, our extra juicy picks. There's quite a few Ravens on that list, um, and it's because our defense is atrocious. So it doesn't matter how much we score. I think we're like fourth in scoring, and we're four and six. Or no, I think we're third in scoring, and we're four oh, yeah. and six. Um, so. Yeah, I, I, for your fantasy outlook, 
Herbert, Allen, like you said, they're, they're going to be good. But we're going to put up points. But from a, from a you know, actual playoff, like real football, no, no. We're losing to the Ravens. And I think the Bills will beat us too because they're going to be they're, – they're fighting for a playoff spot as well. So, um, And if we lose two, it's over. Even if we lose one, I think it's going to be tough because the AFC is so competitive. So yeah. really we need to win out uh, with six losses already. And I don't know if we can. So, yeah. yeah. I got to agree with you there, Kyle. Chargers, we're not going to see him in the playoffs this year. Brandon Staley, he's done. Clean house. Clean house. Yeah. I, I'll take Kellen Moore. I, I, they should have fired Brandon Staley. I said this after the Titans loss. I said, fire Brandon Staley right now. Promote Kellen Moore. See what you've got in him. We need an offensive head coach. Yeah. Because the offensive head, if you have a defensive head coach, the coordinator, offensive coordinator gets poached. You have a good offensive coordinator, they get poached. If you have an offensive head coach, defensive coordinators, it takes them three, four seasons before people are like, okay, let's take a shot on this guy because his defense is so good. Unless you're Brandon Staley and you're the Chargers ownership and you are cheap. And so you're going to get the cheaper coach because he had one year of being a DC before he came to our team as a head coach. He also had Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey. So it's like, I don't know what, I don't know. That's true. And I I believed in him. I mean, if you you watch the last pod we were on over the ASC West, man, I was gushing. I I tried. I tried. But he's a con artist, man. He's a fraud. I have to go back and look at that. I have to go back. (sighs) Moving along here, but staying in the NFL. We're going to Pittsburgh and talking about the Steelers because they fired their offensive coordinator this week, Matt Canada. He got canned. He had been the Steelers' offensive coordinator just since 2021. But, Kyle, this marks the first time that the Steelers have made a midseason head coach or coordinator change since 1941. The Steelers don't do this. The Steelers don't do Mm -hmm. this. They had to step in here. The offense never eclipsed 400 yards in Matt Canada's 45-game career there. Every other team over this same time frame hit 400 yards at least four times. Every other team hit 400 yards at least four times. Steelers haven't done it once. This season, the Steelers are ranked 28th in points per game, 28th in yards (laughs) per game, and 31st in passing yards per game. They've also been outgained every game by their opponent crazy that they're six and four give me your thoughts on the Steelers this firing and the fact that they're six and four getting outgained every game <clears throat> have you ever uh have you ever heard of a guy named Tommy DeVito <laughs> <laughs> I do now <laughs> well Tommy DeVito has uh started two NFL games uh played in three he now has more two touchdown passing games than Kenny Pickett has, and I believe he's at like 28 games or something. Oh, no. Uh, so if that tells you anything, Matt Canada should have been coaching in the Canadian Football League a long time ago. Um, yep. He, I don't, I don't understand it. That's another coach that I don't understand how they made it to this season. Mm-hmm. Should have been fired immediately after the end of last year. Um, he just was never good. Scheme-wise, um, they have all types of weapons. Uh, at the wide receiver position, at the running back position, even at the tight end, I really like Pat Fryer a lot. Um, and he just doesn't know how to utilize him. It's super vanilla, generic stuff. Um, no creativity in the play calling whatsoever and super predictable as well. So, uh, I mean, I'm hoping this has a good upside for everybody in the Steelers offense. Um, although I will say, I don't really think Kenny Pickett's that good of a quarterback uh, no. just in general. Uh, but I do think that they see improvements just because of how bad the, the offensive play calling was. So I, I think it's uh, upside for, um, you know, your George Pickens, your Pat Fryer moves, um, mostly those receivers, to be honest, the, the, the ball catchers. Um, just because Johnson. it's going to, yeah, it's just, it's going to be more creative and um, a little bit more scheming people open rather than super generic, you know, hitches and go routes and things like that. I got to agree that all the blame can't be on Matt Canada, that this is a combination of him and Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett blows, okay? Yeah, he's not good. This decision to fire Matt Canada came from head coach Mike Tomlin. He he emphasized that he didn't didn't get the GM or owner's insight on this. He he went right to Matt Canada, canned his ass. The running backs coach, Eddie Faulkner, 
He's becoming the offensive coordinator. But the quarterback's coach, Mike Sullivan, will be calling the plays. I, I find that I find that weird. Kyle, let's finish this up. Do the Steelers make the playoffs? They're six and four right now. Mm-hmm. Do they make the playoffs? Do you have do you have the remaining schedule? I can bring it up right now. They are currently in the AFC. The Pittsburgh Steelers are sitting at the seventh spot. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sitting at the seventh spot. Their remaining schedule. Coming up this week, they're going to Cincinnati, followed by home games against the Cardinals and Patriots, going on the road to Indianapolis, hosting the Bengals, and then going on the road to Seattle and Baltimore. So Yes, they make the playoffs. They make the playoffs? They, you're, you're they got the them. Bengals twice with no Burrow. Yep. Patriots are going to get Drake May. Cardinals. Or Caleb Williams. Cardinals. Kyler's. Tyler's back, so that might be a toss-up. I still think they win because the Cardinals just aren't there yet. They're still in that rebuild. Um, last two, I don't think really matter. They'll already be at 10 wins. That probably gets them in to the wild card. Yeah. And let's say they win one more, get them to 11 wins. They're definitely in. Um, so I think they do. That's a cakewalk of a schedule. We got the Colts with no Anthony Richardson, two Bengals, no Joe Burrow, Cardinals. Like, that's – yeah. That seems like a pretty cakewalk schedule into the into the playoffs. We got the Cleveland Browns sitting one game ahead of them. If you had to pick one team to miss the playoffs between the Browns and the Steelers, which one are you picking? Mm-hmm. I'm picking – I picked the Browns to miss. Um, I think and, – and my decision is based off coaching. Um Mike Tomlin is a fantastic coach, never had a losing season. Um, I think that him ripping the Band-Aid off and firing Matt Canada is going to um, do just enough to push them over the top. Um, and then also, obviously, Cleveland had uh, the Predator got, you know, he's out yeah. for the year. So yeah, um, as much as I hate him, he's an okay quarterback. I'm okay. not going to say he's good because he really hasn't been anymore. Uh, but still going to a backup quarterback is, you know, DCR – Wild card, wild it, card, young guy. It's a big drop off. I gotta yeah. agree that I like the Steelers more than the Browns. And yeah, I looking at that schedule, I'll say they they sneak in that wild card. The Steelers make the playoffs. Mike Tomlin, we gotta respect him. He's a hell of a coach. Mm-hmm. Moving real quick along. before we get off of this, real quick. Yep, <laughs> yep. Did you see the video of Chris Boswell, the Steelers kicker? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go ahead, bro. He goes go, in. He's like, he's like, real yeah, quick, explain won. it. Real quick, yeah. Explain it. So he goes in. They're walking into the to the locker room, and they're in the tunnel. And Matt Canada goes and shakes up with one of the players because they had just won. And Chris Boswell, their kicker, walks up behind them and says, "It wasn't because of you." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, hilarious. That, that's when you know you're gone. Players hilarious. Are straight up saying it wasn't because of you. <laughs> when, when the fucking kicker is calling you out, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. Moving along on this Thanksgiving Eve episode of the Don't Tell Mama Sports Podcast, we got to give you our game picks. And damn it, Kyle, this week 12 slate, it, nobody's on by. Every every Thanksgiving week, all, all 32 all teams 16. are playing. All like 32, I, all 16 games. Like I said earlier, we got a triple header tomorrow, a Black Friday game for the first time. We got a juicy Sunday night, juicy Monday night game, but let's get in right now, tomorrow. 10.30 out here in Denver, Colorado. Oh, boys, it's going to be an early one on Fox. Divisional matchup in the NFC North. We got the 4-6 and six Green Bay Packers. Just beat your Chargers. Just beat your Chargers. They're going on the road to take on the 8-2 and two Detroit Lions. The Lions are on a three-game win streak after that big comeback against Chicago. I think they keep it rolling. Packers aren't going to be able to score with them. Lions at home going to get this one done. Yeah, I, I agree. Lions, 100%. Um, Packers aren't a good team. Don't let them fool you because they put up 500 yards in the Chargers. Everybody does. Uh, 500? That's what 500? Uh, a little under 500. Uh, it was Jordan Love's first game over 300 yards. He looks like a good quarterback because everybody does when they play us. Wow. I could go play against the Chargers defense and I'd probably look pretty good. <laughs> I, I'm serious. Possibly. Might put up a solid 189 touchdown pick. But throw pick, I'm not, throw a, pick I'm not an athlete there. anymore. I'm not an athlete anymore. So, I mean, <laughs> come on now. You're not active like you used to be, huh? No, no. Uh, the Detroit Lions, this is their first 8-2 and two start since 1962. 
first eight and two starts since 1962. That's pretty impressive. The middle game on Turkey Day tomorrow. Hopefully you got some turkey in your stomach by the time this one rolls around because we got another divisional matchup here. NFC East, the four and seven Washington football queefs, the losers of four or five after they lost to the Giants last week. They're going to Dallas to get their ass kicked by the seven and three Cowboys. They're winners of four or five after blowing out Carolina last week. I said it, blowout. I think it might be like a 12 and a half point spread right now. I'm taking the Cowboys double digits. Uh, I'm going to take the Cowboys as well, not double digits. I think it's going to be a close game. Okay. Uh, it's a rivalry game. Yeah. For some reason, I don't know why, the commanders always play the Cowboys well. They really do. Uh, I don't yeah. I don't get it. It's just a divisional thing. So uh, I think I still take the Cowboys, but I think it's a close game. I think it's a I think it's a touchdown. I think it's, you know, I think it's a touchdown. They uh they end up playing each other in the last week of the season too. It will be the second game yeah. of that one this year. I last... do think it's a shootout though if we're going off like point spreads anything like that. I think it's a shootout. Take the over. Big yours. Yeah, take the over. Over under right now is at 48 and a half. Kyle Jennings yeah. saying take the over on that one. I say take the over on that. I do. Last one on Thursday, Thanksgiving Day. Another divisional matchup here. Hopefully this one's going to be juicy. Might be the juiciest one of the day. The 7-3 seven, seven and three, San Francisco 49ers. They've won two in a row after beating Tampa Bay last week. They're going up to Seattle. The Seahawks are sitting at 6-4. and four. They've lost two of three after losing to the Rams. Kenneth Walker's doubtful. Geno Smith is questionable. He's on track to play. Listed as questionable. Zach Charbonnet is going to get a lot of work. I got San Francisco on the road. It, I don't see Seattle getting this one done. I don't. I, I got I got the 49ers in prime time. Brock Purdy keeps it efficient. Big game coming from Brandon Ayuk. Big fan of Ayuk. Big fan of Ayuk. I'm picking Seattle. Yeah, there you go. There I'm you picking go. Seattle. There you go. Uh, another divisional game, and Seattle always plays San Fran well. They always – they got their number, man. They always are playing them well. Um, that is con- contingent on if Geno plays. Yep. Um, and Drew Locke plays, I'll, I'll take I'll, I'll take San no. Francisco. <laughs> I watched enough Drew Locke being a Chargers fan to know that that's not going to go well. But uh, I think if Geno plays – I, I take Seattle in a squeaker. The uh, the Seahawks and Niners are playing again in two weeks. Two weeks from now, the rematch. So that'll be that'll be quick. Moving into Black Friday, the first ever NFL Black Friday game. The Miami Dolphins at seven and three. They're winners of two of three after beating the Raiders last week at home. This time they're going on the road, going up north to New York, playing the Jets. The Jets are four and six, losers of three in a row. They're benching Zach Wilson. Tim Boyle's coming in. I don't know shit about Tim Boyle. I will tell you, the Jets are converting 22.9% of their third downs this year. That is fucking awful. No, <laughs> no way can Tim Boyle keep up with the Miami offense. Get the fuck out of here, New York Jets. You fucking suck. See you next year, Miami, on Black Friday. I'm gonna have to disagree with you again. Oh, t- Tim, fucking Tim fucking Tim Boyle. Tim fucking Boyle. Tim fucking Boyle. Tim fucking Boyle. You just need somebody. I don't. I think people underestimate how good Garrett Wilson is. It's a shame that Rodgers didn't get to play this year. Oh, that shit. man is, and he's. I, I. I truly think that he's a top seven receiver right now in the NFL. Um, and we just don't know it because he hasn't had anybody that's throwing the ball. Um. I think Tim Boyle is good enough. Typically, backups can go through reads. They're just missing the the physical talent like that upper tier quarterbacks have. So I think that he's going to be able to do it. I also think that that Jets defense is real. I just watched it two weeks ago. Oh, yeah. um, that Jets defense is real. Um, and Tua, um, if you can get a little pressure on him, it, it changes things. And Tua's got a quick release. He's got a very quick release. But if you can get pressure on him fast, like I think the Jets can, it changes that game, changes the timing, changes that whole offense. So I, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the Jets. Wow. That's uh yeah. that's gonna be your spiciest pick today, I think. I think <laughs> that's gonna be your spiciest one. I like Garrett Wilson, man. He was a keeper for me. And damn it, I got him on my bench right now after the two catches for nine yards and a fumble last week. My yeah. God, my goodness, I can't start him. I can't I, I can't. I can't with Tim Boyle. <laughs> 
I got Garrett, I got Garrett Wilson on my bench, unfortunately, right, right now, right now. Moving in to Sunday morning, making some more game picks here for you. We 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 got a snoozer here. We got a snoozer to start us off. The one and nine Carolina Panthers. They just got spanked by the Cowboys last week. They're going to Nashville, Tennessee, to take on my sad ass three and seven Tennessee Titans. Losers of five out of the, out of their last six. They also got spanked last week by the Jaguars. This one's gonna be a snoozer, but I think I think that. Titans are going to get the run game going here. Going to mix it around, get Will Levis a little more comfortable, keep feeding D Hop. Titans are going to get this one done at home. I agree. Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, Panthers are just so bad. That's just simple. They're just very bad. Uh, I think Reich might get canned first year, maybe before the first year is over. Um, and I like Reich. I, I don't know. Maybe I was wrong, but um, yeah, I think Titans got that. Panthers are just bad. Big one here Sunday morning. The NFC South, the five and five New Orleans Saints, going on the road to take on the four and six Atlanta Falcons. Both of these teams are coming off a bye. Falcons lost three in a row going into that bye. Max and I have been uh, going back and forth on these two teams all season. He's got the Falcons in the division. I got the Saints. I got I got some money on Fanduel on the Saints. And I got I got New Orleans getting this one done on the road. I uh, Atlanta they don't seem to know what they're doing with uh, the quarterback situation. They say Desmond Ritter is going to be the starter again. Mm-hmm. They're not they're not using Bijan Robinson. I know he got more work last week. They're not using him like they should be. A number eight overall pick, and you're just going to have him stand on the sidelines like you and me. Come on, <laughs> Falcons and Arthur Smith or Queefs. I'm going New Orleans Saints here in this one. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. Um, Arthur Smith, I think that's another coach that might get canned um, in the middle of the year, if not at the end of the year, um, which is weird. I liked him in Tennessee, but I, I just – he hasn't been utilizing his best players, Kyle Pitts, Bijan, Drake London, none of them. Um, and All so top ten I, picks. I, All top yeah, ten picks. Come on. Yeah, I, I just don't know what he's doing. Uh, so because of that, I'm going to pick the Saints. Yeah. Kamara's looked good, too. Kamara's looked really good. He has looked really good. Another matchup here in the NFC North. Sorry, AFC North. The 6-4 and Pittsburgh Steelers coming off a loss at Cleveland. They're going on the road to Cincinnati to take on the 5-5 and Bengals. They've lost two in a row. They've lost their quarterback, Joe Burrow. They got Jake Browning in there. Are you going to take Jake Browning to beat the Pittsburgh Steelers? No. No. no, Joe Burrow is the heart of, of the Cincinnati Bengals. They're done. They're done they're for done. until he gets back. Yeah, they're done. Bengals are done. Sorry, sorry, Bengals fans. Another another interesting matchup might be a snoozer, but we got the four and six Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They've actually lost five out of their last six. Kyle, after losing at at the Forty ers last week, they're going to Indianapolis. The Colts are five and five. Surprisingly, five and five. They've won two in a row. They're coming off a bye. And because of that extra rest, that extra preparation, it pains me to say that I'm going to take the the Colts at home to go and go to six and five and have a winning record and have a playoff chance. Ah, uh, man, this was a tough one for me. This one was very tough, um, but I'm I'm going to go with Tampa Bay. Um, mm. I think I think their defense has been playing well. Um, and I just – I don't know. Honestly, this is just a gut feeling. Um, I felt like it was going to be a close game regardless. Uh, both teams are very mid. Um, and my gut just went with – I think Baker outplays Gardner Minshew. That's, yeah. That was just – yeah. Mike Evans probably has a, you know, plus 100 yards touchdown. I, I, I think I think uh, I'll take the buck. I like Mike Evans this week, definitely. Yeah. I like that we're disagreeing too. Another snoozer on Sunday morning. God, if you're if you're not a fan of one of these teams and you're watching this game, I, I don't know what the hell you're doing. But we got the two and eight New England Patriots. <laughs> losers of three in a row before their bye. Going on the road to take on the New York Giants, sitting at three and eight. They uh they won at Washington last week by twelve with your boy Tommy DeVito, since you want to bring him <laughs> up earlier. Does Tommy does Tommy DeVito 
beat Bill Belichick coming off a bye? Uh, I'm going to say no. Bill Belichick doesn't lose to young quarterbacks. He just he, he can scheme it so that they have no idea what's going on. Uh, and that's just the reality. He even did it to Herbert, and Herbert was, you know, three. He, he just – his defensive schemes are too good. I, so I, I'm going with the Patriots, even though they're not good, but still Patriots. I don't know how the Giants won last week, but Bill Belichick coming off a of bye, I'm, I'm going to roll with him. I'm going to roll with him. Yeah. One more game here in the Sunday morning slate for week 12. We got a juicy one here in the AFC South. The Jacksonville Jaguars sitting at 7-3. Seven, seven and three, Just spanked my Titans last week. They're winners of 6 of 7. They're going down to Houston. Take on the Texans. They're 6-4. and four. They just beat Arizona. They've won three in a row and four of their last five. I was back and forth on this one, Kyle. I, I really was. <laughs> and uh, what was a week three? Houston went to Jacksonville, spanked them thirty-seven to seventeen. I can see that going again. I'm not a believer in the Jaguars. I'm not a believer in the Jaguars. I'm not. I'm going C.J. Stroud, Tank Dell, <laughs> Nico Collins, Devin Dingleberry, and the Houston Texans at home. Gonna get this one done. I think you're gonna be surprised, but I agree with you. Oh, I kind of, I kind of think the Jags are. Just a little bit of fraudish, a little bit. Like, I, I I, just, every time I watch them, I'm like, how are you? How, how are They're seven and three, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. How? Yeah. How? Uh, yeah. yeah. And Houston's look really good, really, really good. So, yeah, I think I'm going to go with Houston as well. I'm going Houston with you. Moving into the Sunday afternoon games, we got four this week. Starting here with the Cleveland Browns. Seven and three, very impressive. Seven and three, Cleveland Browns. They've won three in a row, and they've won five of their last six after beating Pittsburgh last week. They're coming here to Denver, Colorado, to play maybe one of the hottest teams in the NFL, the Broncos. Five and five, winners of four in a row. Just beat the Vikings on Sunday Night Football. Don't call me crazy, but I think the Denver Broncos right here. Don't sleep on the Broncos helmet. They're going to win five in a row. They're going to take down the Browns here in a DTR at quarterback. Let's go Broncos. Sad as it makes me uh, to say it and pick a division uh, rival. Got to go with the Broncos. Um, like I said, DTR young. I um, think he may have a future as a, as a, as a high end backup in the league, uh, but just don't think he's there yet. That Browns defense, although, is real. It's very real. Yeah. So if they can squeak out a defensive touchdown, maybe a special teams touchdown, mm-hmm. um, might change the game. Well, I, I'm going to pick the Broncos, um, I think. This is going to be a good game. I think everybody would be surprised to hear that Russell Wilson leads the NFL in touchdown <laughs> to interception ratio. He has 19 touchdowns and only four picks this year. I'm shocked. I'm shocked right now that he he's he's getting it going. Him and Cortland Sutton, they're getting something going there. I'm also shocked. Uh, if you remember my bold prediction from the AFC West, I uh, said he'd be benched by <laughs> oh, week yeah. 13. I think I said week brilliant. 13. That's it. What I don't know. I don't remember what week, but uh, I don't think it's gonna happen. So yeah, I was yeah. I was a little off there. But at the beginning, though, I did hey. say after those first couple games, I was like, I might be right. Yeah, I might be right. Yeah, that was that was a juicy one. That was a juicy one. Moving into the NFC West, we got the four and six Rams going to Arizona to play the two and nine Cardinals. The Rams ended their three game losing streak last week with that one point win over the Seahawks. The Cardinals lost that close one at Houston after winning against the Falcons. I think Kyler Murray, he's gonna he's gonna keep getting better and better every week. James Conner is now healthy too, gonna be feeding him. I don't know about the Rams. Uh, is Cooper Cup going to play? How healthy is Matthew Stafford? Kyron Williams is supposed to be back. I don't know. I'm going to go Arizona at home. I'm going to go Cardinals on, at home. Cardinals. Yeah. I, I'm First gonna time go... this year. First time I've picked them really? this year. Yeah, I First think time? So. I think so. Cooper Cup is banged up. You know, I think I've changed my pick. I, I was going to go with the Rams. They're getting Ooh. Kyron Williams back. Thought they might run all over him. But 
Kyler did play very well. I think I think you convinced me. Um, oh, swayed you, huh? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Cardinals. I'm gonna go with the Cardinals. I think I think Kyler's gonna have enough because the the Rams aren't a very good team. Um, so I think Kyler's gonna be a big enough difference. I th- I think they get to know. Another divisional matchup in your AFC West. The 7-3 Kansas City Chiefs. They've lost two of their last three after they lost to Philly Monday Night Football last week. They're going to Las Vegas to take on another surprising record here. Five and six, the Raiders. They lost by seven at Miami last week. I don't like the Raiders, Kyle. I don't like the Raiders. I I rarely ever pick them. I'm not going to pick them to beat the Chiefs. That Patty Mahomes, Travis Kelsey on the road. That MVS drop on Monday night was horrific. It ruined my fucking parlay. He needed a, he needed eighteen and a half yards and got a goose. He he ca- he catches three or four balls, maybe even gets in the end zone this week. I got Chiefs on the road. I uh, I unfortunately have to agree, although I will say, Raiders sometimes play the Chiefs feisty. Sure. They got that they got that interim head coach energy. It looks like everybody hated Josh McDaniel. <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah. they might go out. I think that was another one of our predictions that he got fired. I can't remember, but I have to go I back. To somebody about that. I have to uh, go back. But I would say yeah, I think the Chiefs are going to win, but the Raiders always play them feisty. So Sorry, my dogs are dogs uh, are dogging over here. No, I didn't hear him. I didn't even hear him. You couldn't even hear him? Nope. No. Last yeah. game in the Sunday afternoon slate. Got another juicy one here. Another juicy one. The six and five Buffalo Bills. They just spanked the Jets last week to end their two game losing streak. They're going to Philadelphia to take on the nine and one Eagles. Just talked about it. They beat Kansas City in Kansas City on Monday night football last week. Eagles might be the best team in football. Buffalo has surprised me with their inconsistencies and Josh Allen's all, all his interceptions. Stefan Diggs, who knows if he wants to stay or, or if he wants out. I don't really care, but I don't know. It's just <laughs> it's a it's a lot going on in Buffalo. I got the Eagles here. I got the Eagles at home. I am actually gonna go with the Buffalo Bills. Oh, uh, baby. There's been uh like you said, a lot going on in Buffalo. Josh Allen's been sporadic. Um but they recently fired their offensive coordinator. And um, I don't know if you saw, but last week, Joe Brady, and I, I wanted him. He was one of the options that I wanted as offensive coordinator for the Chargers. Um, Joe Brady was kind of cooking. He was yeah. kind of cooking. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Eagles, well, I think they're a very, very good team, a top five team in the league. Uh, a lot of people are making them out to be this juggernaut, which I don't think they are. Uh, okay. Their roster is very nice, but then at, you actually see it come together and see them play. It's like, okay, that's a good, a very good football team, but not a, a, an unstoppable juggernaut. So I'm going to take the Bills. I think they're going to, I think they're going to put up some points and, and get the dub. Nice. I uh, I hope this one's on locally here because that Bills Eagles, that's that's a juicy one there. Yeah. Sunday night, prime time, baby. This one's going to be on NBC. I know it's going to be on your TV because your four and six Chargers, they're going to host the eight and three Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens have won five of their last six. They've six scored, of their last seven. In six of their last seven, huh? They, they've scored over 30 in five straight games after not hitting 30 in their first six. The Chargers, I've talked about it before, how inconsistent they are. They started the season losing two in a row. Then they won two in a row. Then they lost two in a row. Then they won two in a row. And now they've lost two in a row. Okay, they're just two in a row, two in a row, two in a row. No way in hell that I'm going to sit up here and pick the Chargers tonight. Ravens on the road. Kyle, you going to pick your squad or are you going to surprise me here? I'm going to surprise you. Oh. Wait, is it surprising that I'm not picking them? Because I'm not. <laughs> I don't know what's. I, I I think it would be surprising if you did pick your squad. Yeah, okay, I, yeah, I, I confused yeah. well, myself on that one. You. I I'm confused myself you. on that one. <laughs> uh, no, nah, yeah, that we're we're losing. We're losing. Like I said, trash at the beginning of the second. You know, beginning of the pod, trash. We're just not. Our defense is just not good. We lost Joey Bosa. He's on IR. Um, 
our pass rush, unfortunately, was one of the best things we had. We were like top 10 in the league in, in sacks. Uh, we lost one of our best edge rushers. Still have two good ones, but we picked up a practice squad player. Um, we just don't have the juice on defense to do it. Uh, I think it might be, like I said earlier, um, I think Herbert's going to have a good game. I think Keenan Allen's going to have a good game. I think it'll probably be a pretty high scoring game. Um, but I still think the Ravens win by 10. 10, yeah. double digits. So, Jeez. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a juicy one. It can't be. Monday, <sighs> Monday night, prime time, last game on the slate. I don't know how, but the Chicago Bears keep getting in freaking prime time. I don't I don't want to watch the Bears. <laughs> I don't want to watch the Bears. They're three and eight. They squandered away that win last week at Detroit. They've lost three of the, three of their last four now. They're going to Minnesota. The Vikings are six and five. Their five game win streak ended last week at Denver here in the Broncos. Russell Wilson took them down. But they get back on, on their feet here. The Bears aren't going to win in Minnesota. I know Justin Fields is back. I like Justin Fields, and he can run around all he wants. But Minnesota, I I, I don't see Justin Jefferson playing, but T.J. Hawkinson will be in there, Jordan Addison. I like the Vikings in this one. I am also going to go with the Vikings. Um, I just don't – same thing with the Panthers. I just don't think the Bears are a very good team. Um, I like Justin Fields. Kind of ish. <laughs> um, he's exciting at least to watch, but I, yeah, I don't think uh, the Bears roster just in general is just not very good, not very talented. Uh, yeah, so I, I picked the Vikings as well. Moving into our last segment this week on the Don't Tell Mama Sports Podcast, we got our extra juicy dogs. This is where we give you a quarterback, running back, wide receiver, and tight end that you can feel comfortable putting in your fantasy lineups. Might be a smash hit because of a matchup. Might be a guy lower down in the rankings, a sleeper that you can slide in there in your flex. But we're going to start here at the quarterback position. I'll lead us off here, Kyle. I got Dak Prescott. Dallas Cowboys, they always play on Thanksgiving. The, the Washington football queefs this year. Dak Prescott, he's been hot here lately. He's QB6 on the season. His last four games. He has 13 touchdowns and only two picks. That's a pretty solid ratio. Probably getting close to Russell Wilson on that one. Him and C.D. Lamb, they're clicking. Coming off that bye, C.D. Lamb put up three straight games over 150, I think. The Cowboys, they're 12.5-point home favorites. This game has a 48.5-point over-under. That's tied for the highest on the week. And lastly, the Washington football queefs, they're 32nd against quarterbacks. Dead last, Dak Prescott. He's going to light them up. Big game coming for the Cowboys. Double-digit wins. What do you think about Dak? And give me your extra juicy quarterback for this week, Kyle. Uh, I think Dak's a great pick. Um, you're going to see later in my extra juicy pick that I have another player on their offense. Uh, but, yeah, no, I think it's a great pick. He's been playing really well. Um, like you said, Washington's defense, their secondary is just bad, just bad. Um, so, no, I think that's a great pick. As for my extra juicy dog, I am picking uh, Lamar Jackson. Ooh. And the reason why is because he's playing the Chargers. And if you play the Chargers, you're going to have a good game. And so he's already been playing well. I'm honestly terrified that an NFL record is not broken oh. on Sunday. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Most all-purpose yards. Wow. Maybe 170 rushing, Woo. 300 passing. Yeah, it could happen. Woo. Could, we're that bad. could happen. Lamar, if you got Lamar on your team, start him. Start him promise you he's gonna have a good game yeah i like i like that good game i like that pick i know i know that's tough to take him against your chargers lamar jackson qb4 on the season have, having a great year yeah my extra juicy dog at the running back position for week 12 i'm gonna go to joe mixon i'm gonna go to joe mixon they're playing the steelers sunday morning and you think, oh, the Steelers, you know, you, you don't want to you don't want to take a running back against the Steelers, but they're actually 22nd this season against running backs in fantasy. Joe Mixon might be surprised to you, Kyle. He's running back 10 on the year. Running back 10. He has at at he has had at least four receptions in four games this year. So he's getting dump downs. I think he's gonna get even more dump downs with Jake Browning now at quarterback. He's tied for fifth in the NFL in carries with 153. So he's getting the work on the ground. He scored in four straight games. 
Damn it, Kyle, let's make it five. I got a my buddy, Mr. Tutty, for Joe Mixon against the Steelers. He's finding the end zone. Bengals are going to need to rely on Joe Mixon a little more. He's going to score against the Steelers this week. Yeah, no, I think that's a, I think that's a good pick. He has had a good year, a much better year than I thought he was going to have. Um, I think the the Bengals did a good job fixing their offensive line this offseason, better than I thought. Some of the moves they made worked out a lot better than I thought. Uh, so I, I think that's a great pick. As for my pick, um, I'm going to go with um, another Cowboy. I'm going to go with Tony Pollard. Ah, yep. Washington, they recently at the trade deadline gave up Chase Young, gave up Montez Sweat, both their – uh, very good edge rushers. Um, something you don't think about in, 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 uh, when you're getting rid of edge rushers is they also play a large part in the run game in setting that edge. And I don't think they've got anybody to set that edge. I think Tony Pollard's going to have a massive game. They gave up 175 yard, uh, rushing yards last week. Um, so I think, I think it's going to be another big rushing game for the opponents. Uh, I'm picking Tony Pollard. Nice, nice. I had Tony Pollard last week. I guaranteed a touchdown for him. Finally got back in the end zone. Tony Pollard might be heating up too. My extra juicy dog at the wide receiver position. <laughs> Damn it. It seems like we're picking on the on the Washington football team or the Washington football queefs, but I'm going C.D. Lamb. I got a nice little stack here with Dak Prescott. They're playing tomorrow like we talked about in that middle game. Get some turkey in your belly before <laughs> this Cowboys game because it's – it's going to be a beatdown. C.D. Lamb, his last four games in full PPR scoring formats, he was wide receiver 15 last week, the week before wide receiver two, week before wide receiver two, week before wide receiver one, okay? I talked about it with Dak. These two guys figured something out during the bye week. Cowboys are 12.5-point home favorites, 48.5-point over-under is tied for the highest on the week. The Commanders, they are 31st against wide receivers, second to last. Uh, I'm piling on here. I'm going C.D. Lamb with the my buddy, Mr. Tutty. I think C.D. <laughs> Lamb is going to catch one, baby. Call me greedy. Call me greedy, but I think C.D. <laughs> Lamb finds the end zone. Tomorrow, Thanksgiving, Turkey Day, him and Dak Prescott, they're going to be they're gonna be wrestling over that turkey leg at the end of the game. They're both going to be chewing on it because it's going to be an ass beating. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about the ass beating part, but like I said, I think it's going to be a high scoring game. I think uh, Dallas is going to put up points. Uh, I think that's a great pick. CD Lamb's been playing out of his mind. Um, that's another receiver, extremely good in all aspects of the game, run after catch, route running, um, got a little bit of explosiveness in there. So I think that's a great pick. I'm also going to be doing a stack of my own. Um, by picking Mr. Zay Flowers, uh, the rookie. once again, going against the Chargers. Um, I think we're 32nd in EPA allowed, or 31st in e defensive EPA allowed. Horrible. Um, just receivers just feast on us, man. Like I said, Jordan Love had his first 300-yard game of his career against us. Uh, they put up 400-plus all-purpose yards. Like, offenses just feast against the Chargers defense, and I think it's going to be another one. Um, we've got nobody that can really hang with Jay Flowers. Um, also, our, our coach doesn't know how to scheme. It'll be third and one. He'll have him 10 yards off the line or cornerback. So you get the ball with five yards of free space. And if Zay Flowers has five yards of free space, that could turn into a touchdown at any time. So um, to go along with that, my buddy, Mr. Oh, Tutty, Zay Flowers. Oh, baby. Um, yeah, I know he's kind of a uh, – um, as far as fantasy goes, he's kind of a, you know, a spot starter, a flex player. I think this is the week you play him. I think he's mm -hmm. going to have um, quite a few receptions, especially if you're in a PPR league, quite a few receptions. And also, like I said, I think he's getting in the end zone. So uh, you got Lamar, you got the Lamar's Day flower stack. Definitely put that in, lock that in. Uh, I think it's going to be a good week for, for you. Heck yeah, I like that. One touchdown in the season for Zay Flower is going to get a second this week. I like it. Mm-hmm. Lastly, my extra juicy dog at the tight end position. I'm coming out here to Denver, Colorado, because the Cleveland Browns are in town. And I'm going David Njoku, okay? They're playing Sunday afternoon out here. David Njoku's tight end 11 on the season. He had 15 targets last week. He had 15 targets last week. His targets over the last five games, he had 15 last week, then 9, 6, 8, 9. You can't find me too many tight ends that can say that right now. He's now tied 
in fourth at the tight end position in targets with 69. He's getting looked at. The Broncos, okay, their defense has improved since they got their ass beat by – since they gave up 70 <laughs> points to the Dolphins. Their defense has definitely improved, but still – Hard the to same, get worse. <laughs> hard, <laughs> hard, hard, hard to go hard down to from that. Yeah. <laughs> but – the Broncos still on the season. They are dead last against the tight end position in fantasy. They're 32nd. I'm going Dave Njoku to have a nice game. I'm not going to guarantee a touchdown. I'm not going to get greedy, okay? I'm not going to get too greedy. Dave Njoku, you can fire him up if you got him. If, you, if you're in a situation, you're debating him and, I don't know, Taysom Hill or him and, um, I don't know, Trey McBride. I'm, I'm random tight ends right now. Uh, Kyle Pitts. I don't know. Throw David Njoku in over those guys. Yeah. No, I think that's a good pick. Um, the reason why the Broncos are so bad against tight ends is they, they don't really have uh, the linebackers that can move. I like Josie Jewell. He's a good linebacker, but he's a run stopper, not a lateral mover, not a, not a coverage guy. Mm. Um, so I think that's a good pick. Uh, my, uh, my pick is going to be TJ Hawkinson. Uh, like I said earlier, that Bears team is just not good. Talent's not there. Um, I believe um, they picked up they two big contracts, Tremaine Edmonds as middle linebacker and uh, TJ Edwards. I think TJ mm-hmm. Edwards is still on IR. Um, he was their best coverage linebacker. Tremaine Edmonds is an athlete, but he has no idea what he's doing in the open field. Um, I, I, I think Hawkinson gets lost. He's, uh, I, I don't think, like you said, that Justin Jefferson's going to play. Um, I don't think they're going to feel like it's worth it. Um, I think they think they can win without him and give him another week of rest. Um, so I, I think Hawkinson's going to get a lot of targets, and I think I think it's going to be a good good play for you next week. So I like TJ Hawkinson. Joshua Dobbs has definitely impressed us after the trade from Arizona to fill in for Captain Queef Cousins. Good, good, good start there for, for TJ Hawkinson. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Don't Tell Mama Sports Podcast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. We're in a few places now. We're on YouTube, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Twitter, uh, maybe one more. I can't think of it. But, Kyle, appreciate you uh, pinch in for us this week. Had to make a call into the bullpen. A couple guys, you know, I, I called on them. Too nervous. Too nervous. You know who you are. I don't need to say I don't need to say your name. Too nervous. Kyle, just want to say appreciate it, brother. You got anything to say to the people before you get out of here? Uh, no, happy to be back. Glad to be a reoccurring guest. First time hearing that I'm a backup, though. I didn't know I was backup backup. I thought <laughs> I, I, I thought I was, I thought I was second string. Now I'm learning <laughs> I'm third string. Might have well, to change my tune, set my game up so I move up in the depth chart, man. Well, what hey, we'll see. We'll see what the people think. We'll see what the people think of you. See how many views we get, and then yeah, you might have to rise up that depth chart for sure. All right, we'll see. Got to keep working. I'm working. I'm working to move up. So hopefully this helps my case a little bit. Hell yeah. Well, Kyle, appreciate you coming on. Like I said, have a great Thanksgiving, man. Enjoy that time with your buddies and your family. Everybody, enjoy time. Feed your face tomorrow, get a bunch of turkey, throw some pie down your throat with some whipped cream, get, put some whipped cream all over your face. Have, have a great have a great turkey day, three games tomorrow, Black Friday game, going to be more college basketball tournaments going on. Feast week, got to stay hungry, Kyle. Have a great week, and we'll talk to you soon.